call the meeting to order at six o'clock. Um, select board has a statement uh, before we move forward to regular business. Um, on Friday, October 21st, David Diesendorf, a longtime resident of Townsend, who was very active in town government, died in a, tra in a tragic aviation accident in Keene, New Hampshire. David held numerous positions in town government. He served on the select board, the town school board, the emergency management director, and on the fire department, and various other committees. Um, he was extremely active um, in a lot of places. Our condolences go out to the entire Diesendorf family. Uh, we are very sorry for your loss. Okay. Let's uh, go to regular business. Motion, entertain a motion to approve the October 11th select board meeting minutes. So we'll second. There, there is a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five vote. of the public, respondents. Okay, Rob, go ahead. Make a motion to pay the warrant starting with number one <coughs> payroll in the amount of $11,043.96. Number two payroll tax in the amount of $4,888.39. Number three general fund in the amount of $20,951. Number four general fund in the amount of $6,684.66. Number five, highway fund in the amount of $4,434.38. Number six, highway equipment fund in the amount of $350. Bucks. Number seven, highway equipment fund in the amount of $1,272.60. Number eight, library fund in the amount of $1,278.77 for a total of $50,903.76. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the warrants signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five on. Okay, we have an addition to the agenda, um, and it's the permit to be signed for the speed signs in West Townsend. And uh, we'll get to that under new business. Also, uh, okay, um, Stephen, go ahead with the highway report. The emergency repairs to uh, Bridge 37 on Pekin Mountain Road have been completed. We do have to correspond with the state, Tommy, that uh, the work has been completed. I have a copy of the page here that has to be. Okay. Um, filled out and the address of where it gets sent to. Salt. We have two bids for salt. Uh, Cargill, who was our supplier last year, gave us a quote at $84.50 a ton. And Appalachie, who we used two years ago, has given us a price for $95.50 a ton. And that's basically transportation costs is different. One coming out of Rockingham and the other coming out of Rochester, New York. So. I make a motion to accept Cargill's bid at eighty-four fifty a ton for salt for the 22-23 season. Is so there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Cheryl, if you can sign this call, please, and I can send it to them, and they can get us an assistant for this year. Okay, I'll put it to sign it after we're after Okay. We're done. Is there a limit to how many, like, whatever you had said that you want? 450. Well, once we get to 450, if we go by it, do we get charged any more or no. any less? No. And I will be at a road foreman's meeting tomorrow at the Dover Highway Department. Discuss the emerald ash ore. And what's that? They serve a lunch? Yes, they are. <laughs> Light lunch. Is this about trees? It's about trees. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other questions for Steve? All right. 
move on to the treasurer's report. Our true fund balance is $966,927. The bank reports in the account $1,359,572.31. And the usual $30,000 in the checking account. Uh, town clerk taking in uh, $1,295.30 in the various uh, items that she collects for. I have under old business, uh, Brattleboro Developed Credit Corporation, and that's you. I have these for you all. And we have already given those to um, Yeah, I think oh, we've got them all. Great. Oh, great. Good. Great. If you could give your name to the... Sure. Uh, uh, Laura Sibillian, I'm the Director of Regional Strategies for the Brattleboro Development Credit Corp. I'm also a state rep. That is not the hat I'm wearing here today. Uh, and uh, I will tell you my goal is for uh, the town of Townsend to write a letter of support for uh, our designation in Southern Vermont uh, from the federal government. We're seeking a designation to have the Southern Vermont zone become designated as an economic development district. Now I'll back up a little bit and tell you about that. So uh, in, <coughs> uh, in Wyndham County in 2014, we created a SEDS, a Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Uh, and that is a federally prescribed process for looking at data, going out in a public process, talking with citizens and businesses uh, throughout the region, uh, about the data, about what folks are feeling and seeing and needing in their region, and coming up with a strategy, a five-year strategy for growing the economy. It is an economic development plan. Uh, so we did that in 2014. In 2015, uh, and I will tell you in 2014, the big things that emerged out of that process were we really need to think about our workforce. We're getting older. Uh, we're very rural. <clears throat> And we're seeing uh, a mismatch in the skills that our citizens have and the skills that our employers need. And so we have a, we have a problem here that we need to figure out. 2015, the legislature uh, designated Wyndham and Bennington counties together uh, as the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone. They designated it as a region uh, that was in need of um, economic attention because of declining population, again, workforce issues. Uh, since that time, the federal government, seeing that designation, said, okay, when your five-year plan for Wyndham County 2014 sets is up, we'd like you to do a two-county sets for this zone for Wyndham and Bennington, which we did, and that was in 2019. Uh, we did a public process. And the next one will be in 2024. When that says is completed, that, and the documents that you have in front of you, uh, the white booklet is the 2019 sets. The yellow booklet is last year's uh, BDCC annual report that talks a little bit about the programs and work that we're doing there to implement the sets and that we are leveraging municipal funding uh, from a, a whole bunch of different towns to try and get some scale and capacity to solve their problems. So <clears throat> now that we have the Southern Vermont zone, the federal government has invited us to seek designation of that zone where we have this two-county, five-year plan as an economic development district. And <clears throat> If we are designated as an economic development district, here are the things that will happen. Uh, they are typically funded on an annual basis, a small amount of funding, not enough for a full-time staff person, to help further coordinate implementation of the SEDS. Right now, implementation of the SEDS takes place through BDCC, Wyndham Regional, Bennington County Regional Commission, a number of our municipalities, some of our nonprofits, etc., are banding together. 
So designation would add some additional capacity funding for implementing on an annual basis. It also uh, <coughs> prioritizes projects within uh, that district that are seeking federal funding for receiving that federal funding. It doesn't mean they're guaranteed to get it. And here's why it prioritizes funding. Because the federal government knows that in this region, the folks here have looked at data. They have talked uh, out in public with businesses and residents, nonprofits, about what folks want to see. They have an understanding of the data about what they want to see. They've created a plan. And so investments of public taxpayer money in that region for projects as part of that set are likely a more responsible investment than in places that don't have uh, that type of public process and plan. So the Economic Development District, which we are seeking a letter of support for that designation, um, is our next step in doing this. Uh, for designation, we need the majority of the towns in the zone to say, yes, we think working together regionally makes sense. And we think the federal government should recognize this area as an area that works together on economic development. There you go. Anybody got any, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, namely, so you mentioned that some of the municipalities will be funding a lot of the, um, the programs that you guys support. How, how can you, you give any examples of other towns and what that looks like for them? So my colleague, Chrissy, that came to the last meeting, came and spoke about the municipal funding request that BDCC um, does annually for the Wyndham County towns. And we ask for $3 a person uh, from each town. That funding uh, is, <clears throat> unlike other um, state or federal funding, it's pretty flexible, and so we leverage that multiple times uh, to bring in other philanthropic dollars uh, and, and even state or federal dollars for shared problems that our municipalities have, right? So namely, not most of our municipalities do not house large employers, but all of our municipalities house uh, workers, people that need jobs that pay taxes, that would probably like to aspire, you know, in their, many would like to aspire in their career, et cetera. And so those programs are intended, uh, that municipalities invest in together, uh, are intended to help our workforce, our students. Um, we have a number of, we just had a reality fair here. I don't know if anybody was able to go to it last week, which was amazing, <laughs> right next door uh, with, the kids from Leland and Gray and uh, Bellows Falls, Twin Valley, uh, some of the kids from the Career Center. Brattleboro was not able to come last minute, uh, but we had financial literacy down in the gym at Leland and Gray, and then we had um, kind of just life up in the gym here uh, with CPR and gardening and, uh, you know, what would you want to have known if you weren't going to college, say, at 18, uh, what are the skills that you would have wanted? So. That program was funded by partially by municipal investment. Okay, yeah, that's, that makes sense. It's very clear. So it sounds like it is an investment from each individual town, yes. broken down to per person that lives in the town. Yes. And are there chances that if we were to support a program like this, that would change, and how much power would we have over that? So I'm not sure what you mean. What would change? Um, the the cost of the of support. It has been three dollars since we started doing this. Uh, this program started in 2012 or 13. Uh, we initially, the BDCC and the state of Vermont were matching funds to start planning for the closure of VY and we were starting to understand regionally the workforce situation. We went to the town of Brattleboro and said, Brattleboro, we really think, you know, as the largest town you guys should be in. And Brattleboro at the time, to their credit, said, well, we think we should be in too, but tell you what, you go match what we're going to put in with the rest of the municipalities, and then we'll be in. And we said, okay. And uh, that actually, we think, has been such a worthy endeavor to bring us out to all of our small municipalities, out to select boards, and say, here's what we're doing. And, you know, hear it from folks like, that's actually not helpful, or this would be more helpful, or... Here's the type of information that we need. We typically go to town meetings uh, when we're on the morning uh, as well. And just to be clear, 
I'm looking for a letter. BDCC was here looking for support, and I'm happy to continue speaking to that as well. So. Right, just so you know, this goes through the Social Services Committee every year, okay. and they decide and make a recommendation to town meeting. Got it. So it is a state, it's regulated as far as what we're spending. I guess that, that was my only question. The town taxpayers get the weigh in on it. Got it. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Thanks. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. Um, the way we usually do something like this, when somebody comes and asks us for a letter of support, to get with Connie, draft what's necessary. There, there is a draft. Is there a draft? Okay. This just came? Uh, it came after last week's okay. select board meeting. You had asked for it at the last meeting. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's put it off the table until next week so everybody has a chance to read it. Go through it and ask any questions, and then we'll bring it up again at the next meeting. It's right in front of you here. You can't. Oh, there it is. Okay. And just so the letter of support is merely for the designation from the federal government. It has nothing to do with the funding request. That's right. All right. Well, I'll, my my inclination would be to hold on to it for a week or until next meeting, but it's up to the rest of you what you want to do. If you want to just sign off on it, or my only question is, I think there was a deadline. So we're hoping to get this in by December. Next okay. week would be fun. It may be a little tricky for me to get here. I well, as long as, as, long, as, long, as long as the rest of the board uh, is in agreement. We'll just sign off on it and send it to you. So. And I could actually come the night. Is okay. it the night? Yeah. Yeah. Not the night. Oh, that's so election night. Is that what the rest of the I board would like to do? Or? I think we I've been I've been reading up on it quite a bit. It seems like a pretty exciting, straightforward program. I'd be willing to sign on the letter. See, I haven't seen it. But. It's you know, a copy of it's in the package. <laughs> Many papers. Here it is. And um, in your experience, does this designation typically make it easier to receive federal funding for economic development? Yes. Okay. So I mean, I we I haven't worked in a district, but my research has helped me understand that yes, it does. Okay. And for instance, uh, when COVID hit, and the federal government was looking to put funding on the ground for employers who were shuttered and trying to keep uh, their employee staff. They put, they actually put funding into each one of these districts because they knew like, okay, this is an organization or entity a designation that has, that's connected throughout the region, that has a plan. It's probably a more responsible bet than, you know, right. other places yeah. that don't. It sounds like a safety net in a way. Otherwise, the collapse is imminent. Yeah. You all set? Uh, I was wondering what um, an expansion of our business infrastructure would look like, in your opinion. So uh, it could be any number of things. So we cl uh, we classified a whole host of projects, and you'll find uh, in the sense um, projects under that. Uh, it could be um, lending. It could be water and sewer, although that's probably community. Um, there's economic development infrastructure as well. Um, so business infrastructure, lending, training, technical assistance, those types of programs. They're kind of generally referred to that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no other questions. Are you all right with? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, we'll put it um, into a motion. Uh, entertain a motion to support uh, Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone um, for Brattleboro Community, or Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. So are we supporting them, or are we 
support. Letter of support. Letter of support. Letter of support. Letter of support. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Five oh. The second question would be, do you want me to sign this or do you want the entire board to sign it? Whatever your pleasure, pleasure is, sir. Yes, please. I always ask the board members before I sign something initial or individually. I apologize. No problem. Can you remind me of your name? Laura Sevilla. Laura Sevilla, thanks. You're welcome. Fine. If you could grab a copy of that and get that underway. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, and just if I might uh, just add briefly, next summer we hope to be um, starting the process for the 2024 SEDS. Uh, and uh, we have had um, public meetings up in Townsend in the past. We've had them in Bellows Falls and New Fame. Those are the closest. Uh, we won't have those meetings in every town in southern Vermont, but they will be close. We hope that we'll all be able to have some participation. So, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, too. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we'll back up. Laura, what do you got? Oh, okay. He was here before me. He was here before Okay, so um, I got together a petition as I thought I was being asked to do at the last the last time I mentioned the gazebo and uh, a friend of mine wrote it up and um, I've gotten over I've got almost four full pages of signatures of people that support this petition um, and I'll just read it to you yeah, that's what it's about so um, it says we the citizens of Townsend, Vermont, hereby petition the town to take immediate action to repair the gazebo on the town common and to maintain it on a regular basis. At present, the gazebo has seven, several missing balusters, spindles, whatever you want to call them, and thus poses a significant danger to, of someone, especially children, falling off the stage. The gazebo is adjacent to the Townsend Elementary School, and the common is used at the children's playground, and it's used regularly by many people. The Pumpkin Festival, which, well, she wrote this before the Pumpkin Festival, which will be taking place on the Common this month, is only one example of a time when it is normally in use. Immediate measures such as warning tape and plywood boards across the openings are needed, with more permanent repairs to be made ASAP. Since these balusters are made of wood and can easily be kicked up by vandals, perhaps a metal cast iron railing would make a better, more permanent solution. Once these repairs have been completed, routine maintenance of the gazebo should be scheduled and included in the town budget. It is much, much less expensive to maintain a structure than to wait for greater damage in an unsafe condition to occur. If someone was to be injured due to the condition, due to the condition of the gazebo, the town could be held liable. The gazebo is an integral part of our classic picturesque Vermont Common and is very meaningful to its residents and visitors. We trust that you will accept this responsibility and make the necessary repairs immediately before anyone gets hurt. Thank you. And um, since I've been talking with people about all this and getting these signatures, um, there are, there's a lot of love for that building in this town. Uh, people have gotten married in it, their parents got married in it. Um, the school doesn't even allow the children to go in it anymore because there's rusty nails sticking out of those railings where the, where the balusters have been kicked out. Um, there's big gaps where any child could fall through. In fact, during the pumpkin festival, somebody put a slide in there. <laughs> it was just, you know, it, it, it's like, it's embarrassing, it's painful to see, and it's actually, it really could be a major liability. So, especially right now, at least, like, block it off, because people shouldn't even be going in there. Um, so that's basically, the, you know, the gist of it. Um, and I also found out through some people that there's actually, for one thing, some people told me about grants that might be available, matching fund grants and things like that to help cover the cost of repairing it. But of course we have to get it together in order to get those grants. But there's actually, in this, the town report, it says there's a common fund, which I was told could be used to repair things on the common, that's what it was set up for. And there's also a fund called the Mosley Fund, which is also could be used for repairs on things on the common. So we do have the money in, in our budget, in Stop. our Stop coffers. Right 
you don't have the money. Okay. As far as the common fund goes, we need to research. I believe we know what that money came from, but it has to be solid. If it came from uh, something that was voted on for town meeting and put into a reserve fund, we can't touch it until town meeting votes to uh, change the designation. Ch yeah, reallocate it, change the designation. And the Mosley Fund was not actually for the town common. The Mosley Fund was actually initially brought up as, as um, the fire de to fund the fire department and fund the library. So that was a straight, uh, somebody who had passed on, it, there was a will, the son administered the will, and those two designations. Also, so there are numerous designations in that fund. Not nope, just those I, got the, I got the letter, there's two things on it. Okay. So, there are funds, just more research has to be done. Mm -hmm. And when I said you needed a petition, what you needed the petition for was to ask to have a special article put on town meeting. And it has to be to raise funds to maintain it. Okay? Mm -hmm. We know what the problems are over there. We just got to find the funding to be able to fix, the, fix mm -hmm. it. And grants, six months to a year. Mm -hmm. We just finished a, a grant process to fix for to recover funds for fixing the road. It took over a year to mm -hmm. be done. So, but it was it was implemented by you guys. This grant, this this funding. Yeah. And you guys worked on it and tried to get it right. How, yes, <laughs> but the problem is, Laura. The problem is, is it took hundreds of man hours to be done. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, "I want a grant to replace the money I, to I fix the road." I understand that. I'm not saying. Okay. I understand so, that it takes time and it takes research and it takes that sort of thing, but this needs to be dealt with. It can't be just pushed off onto a back burner. It really is important that it be dealt with. And I've got over 50 people mm -hmm. in just a couple of days that totally agree with me. And I would be glad to do another petition for the town meeting. or online. Sign. It's right here. Right you here. Went, so you right. went, these people came to you. I went and deal. personally talked to everyone. Okay. Because people voting online people. don't don't cut it. This was not online. I went around to different places in town. I went to the school. I went to the, the uh, grocery mar the market. I went to Harmonyville. I went to the well, library in front of the library. I talked to people in person. I like I said, Laura, it takes time. I understand. Uh, that, but we it understand time. what the problem is, um, and we'll deal with it. If you want, if you. Where those people want it closed so nobody gets on it, we can do that. We need it to be closed. It says right on this petition, it needs to be closed until it's repaired. What's the uh, what's the number of voters on a ballot petition? Just about five percent of the thousand. So. Is that fifty? That's fifty. I've got fifty. Okay. We can buy some plywood and close the thing down, certainly. I don't pe don't think people are going to be happy about that, but well, it would be better to to like put some no, kind no, no, of no. warning tape or something. No, 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 no. Okay. If it's going to be closed. It's going to be closed. All right. Um, warning tape can be stepped. That's true. Stepped over, torn yeah. down. But it, 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 I think, to everyone's benefit, it needs to be blocked off until it's repaired. Everyone's then, benefit. What do you mean? Well, because if we end up. If we get a lawsuit because someone falls off of that gazebo, some, a child falls off and ends up on that cement with a cracked open head, it's going to hurt everyone in this town. It's not, I mean, there's no denying that. It's happened before. We've gotten sued before. And you know? we'll be and, sued again. It happens. It, but it would, would be nice to be proactive about it instead of like leaving a, you know. We can be sued for putting boards across it. I mean, you well, need to be real about this. People will sue for just about anything. If somebody falls down when it's totally fixed, we can be sued. For yeah. So this is this is like almost the it's it's like ne negligence. It's not just a matter of you know okay well there's two happy people out there and they're more that they're willing to like sue you for any for dropping the ball. It's it's actually negligence because it's like an accident waiting to happen. Those rusty nails. If so, some kid or somebody was in there and grabbed that railing and didn't know those nails were there, they could get a tetanus. You know, it's like, it's just dangerous. 
So if they don't like it, I mean, these people were okay with it being blocked off because they agree that it's dangerous, but they want to see it fixed. They don't want to see it falling into more neglect or more, like, more ramshackle state. It needs to be fixed and it needs to be addressed. So that's, you know. And your petition to Klein. We'll research whether those are valid. I've got copies. We'll research whether those are valid signatures from town residents, mm -hmm. and then we'll move forward. And on I have some at home too that I didn't get in there because I didn't fill out the pages yet. I've, I'm going to continue to get signatures just because I'd like to fill out the other pages that I've got to show just how many people are concerned, and there are a lot. If everybody that was concerned put in five bucks, you'd have enough money to put the balusters back on we and could, be all fixed. But I'm not allowed to do that. What am I, I'm just Joe Blow down the street. People aren't, I can't just take money from people. I have to be, it has to be legitimate. It has to be someone that's representing the town legally oh, no. in order to collect money. I can't just take money. Laura, come on. Let's... Well, I could just take money, but it's not. <laughs> you know, I'm, people can't just, aren't going to just hand me money. Unless I can say, okay, I'm, uh, we've started, so we've, a group of us have started this fund in order to try to fix this gazebo. But also, I mean, this is a town thing. It's like, granted, every, I'm sure everyone is willing to put in five bucks. I'm sure they would. That's 250 bucks out of 50 people. You know? Take, take and I'm sure people that would be willing to even work on it, because they told me that they would be willing to. But I've been told already that that's a liability issue, so we can't do that. I think you, you know, could what form is a the of people issue? that were interested in doing that and then come to us and say, we have this group of people, they have researched cost, they are all willing to donate, people have resources, people have man hours. I think that... I would bet that seems a week fun. of my pay that there is one person on this board that if we saw a group of volunteers out there working on it, that any of us would slam the brakes on our vehicle, run out there and tell them to get off of it and stop working on it. Mm -hmm. I'll almost guarantee that. I can help all right? What? I can help you. Yeah, well, that would be wonderful. I mean, John I Evans has put time into it for years. I know he has. Working on it. He so has. it's like, and nobody's ever told John Evans to get off it, get away from it, and don't touch it. Well, I was, look, I was told during one of these meetings that we couldn't get a group of volunteers together because of liability issues. Well, I was told well, that. So don't tell me in one point that it's not, that it's okay, and another point that it's not okay. Laura, you've never been told by this board that. Never have been told that. You, you told me that. I did not tell you that. <laughs> All right, this point, this argument is going nowhere. Yes, it is. We will it's research sure this to see if there are they meet their criteria, mm -hmm. and in the meantime, we'll figure out what the what it's going to take to totally shut that down. Mm -hmm. Did anybody go through and take a uh, get an accurate estimate of exactly how many balusters needed to be replaced? what a gallon of paint would cost for the green, the white, and come up with any sort of an idea of what it would cost so that... Not yet because this was the first step, but I'm more than willing to do that research and so it's done. So what I would suggest is, is while you're trying to get signatures for the petition, before that you call WWs and just get an idea what it would cost for some balusters. And if you really want to go with the wrought iron steel, Okay. for railings and balusters instead, I would call Vermont Steelcraft, who was Rick Crawford out of Rockingham, who was a very knowledgeable person. I would call Johnny Swing out of Brookline, very good at welding. I would call Brattleboro Roof and Sheet Metal. They might be able to fabricate something up and find well, some prices of these things. I, I have In that way, people. can you listen? Okay. Please. In that way, when you're talking to these people and soliciting their signature on the petition, you could let them know that this is what it's going to cost mm -hmm. to get it done and if they would like to volunteer their time or donate some money that would be a good way to go about it mm -hmm. and that would be one way of putting the ball in motion towards getting it done mm -hmm. and i think that if you went down there and you figured out what it costs and then you went to these people and told them that it's going to cost 300 bucks 400 bucks five whatever it is then you might get some leverage with them as far as donations. Yes, but I also think that the town, is, in a sense, is also responsible financially for taking Did I say anything this. about responsibility financially or liability? No. 
All I said is find out what it might cost. I mean, oh, it's good. I mean, you know, go over there and you can count where each spot that you say there's a rusted nail, there used to be a baluster. One, two, three, so on and so forth, going around it and come up with a number. That's insulting. Um, but well, how uh, is it insulting? I've already put a call out to someone that did a fabulous job on some railings with metal because I, balusters aren't, uh, you, you actually pointed out that putting in more balusters especially if the railings themselves are starting to get punky, which I've looked at it. I went over and looked at it. Uh, the, even the railings there, where the balusters were, the wood is getting soft. So if we put wooden balusters back up and for some reason someone decides to kick them out again, even if the balusters themselves are strong, they're just going to come off again because the wood that they're, that they're put into is soft. So the whole thing, all the, the railings and the, up, and the balusters need to be replaced. And I've actually called out, I've called a few people and I'm waiting on return calls that have done work using the metal balusters and the wooden railings and it looks really nice and I just need to find out what it costs and how, you know, where do they source their materials. I've already done that, I just haven't heard back yet. And there's a place in Springfield called Springfield Fence Company that sells already assembled panels. And it's not Home Depot, it's really, it's well built stuff. I've already done that, some of this stuff, but I'm not, I wasn't sure how far I should go with this because I needed to take one step at a time and I'm not even sure what steps I'm taking. I just know that it needs to be addressed. I'd like to say, Laura, I'm impressed with your initiative in this. I'm impressed by your ferocity that you're approaching it. Just now, my main concern, especially for the people who are concerned about the aesthetic of our beautiful commons, is until all of that's figured out, the actual things we can process in both pond, it's going to be covered in plywood. So as the sooner we can do that, the better. I think your energy right now is what we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. What is what the <laughs> So yeah. anyway, um, yeah. Uh, so that's the scene right there. That's what I've been working on. And I will continue to work on finding prices and whatever I can do, I'm willing to do it. I'm, I'm not, you know, just throwing stuff out there to complain. It's, it's really a, a concern. And um, as I said, I was under the impression that these funds were available, that which could help them also. There's a grant that someone told me about. That, as I said before, there's a matching funds grant that seems as if it would be something that a niche that could fill maybe future repairs. You know, um, and it's just a matter of a step at a time. But the steps need some, every journey starts with a step. Did we get anything, did you have anything literature about the grant? I sent it to Connie. Oh, okay. Uh, so in fact, one of the people that signed the petition sent it to me because he liked to see it done. He was one of the people that said he volunteered to help. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So it's, it's the step that's been taken and I will continue to slog forward um, and uh, see how it goes. Thank you, thank you. Yep. Uh, let's see, we did the Credit Corporation. West River Valley Consent. Um, this, this one we put off uh, last week. And what it is, is um, essentially it has to do with MT Bank taking over peoples. From what I've been told about this, the the funding that West River Valley uh, Assisted Living got, um, they had to go through a process that the town was involved in and if they behave themselves and pay their, uh, or do what they guaranteed to do, the entire debt was going to be forgiven after 40 years. Right. Um, and all this is is just giving MT Bank the uh, authority that Peoples did. Um, is there anyone that has any issue with signing off on this at this no. point? No. Okay, then we'll take that and get that done. Um, probably ought to have a motion for this. Um, motion would be uh, to sign the consent uh, agreement for West River Valley Assisted Living Partnership. Move. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Five vote.
V-Trans permit. This is to put another sign, or those flashing um, sign, on Route 30 in West Townsend. This is something the Planning Commission did. Um, this is not giving them any funds, but this is give, getting the permit established for West Townsend. And I will tell you that I get a couple of calls from people up there that were interested in this, this same type of traffic calming situation. Um, is there any comment or questions about it? We did this same thing, and Steve, you had the, you said you had the signs. Yes. Um, and the two locations are more marked on the map that's a, that's attached. So I would entertain a motion to um, forward the permit to the state for their consideration on putting the speed uh, signs in West Townsend. So. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? Okay. All those in favor of signing the permit? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Five left. Let's figure out where that is. Okay. Uh, the next meeting, November 8th. Uh, that's all I have, unless uh, sure, you have um, anything else. That's election day, so this room's going to be used. Okay. So we'll probably have to go into into the list of the office. Okay. Before you close completely, I just realized that when you were talking about putting plywood in the gazebo, I don't know how much you talk plywood you're talking about using, but plywood is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it almost way. seems contraindicative to spend a whole bunch of money on some plywood to block it off um, when you could be like using less plywood and maybe use the money towards fixing the gazebo. I don't, I, I'm kind of having a hard time wrapping my brain about how one is okay and one isn't. Does that make sense to all of you? Plywood is like ridiculously expensive right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, were, you put the, talk, were you talking about putting plywood across just the, the doorway? Or were you talking about closing in the entire gazebo with plywood? Because that's a whole lot of money. Well, we didn't talk anything about plywood, only you did. No, he actually said he was going to plywood it in. How many people can switch your stuff around? <laughs> okay, we're done. So am I going to be ignored by this? Is this whole thing going to be just ignored? Laura? Enough. What do you want? Plywood? Do you want tape? What What would make it so that it would be shut down for the moment and make... If, if there's something across the entryway, you know, the, the part of the steps, it doesn't have, the whole thing doesn't have to be plywood. It would I, caution it tape and clear. private property signs be all right? The, as far as the... The people that, according to the petition, that caution tape would be okay. Okay. If you think it would be okay, um, you know. But as far as you know, if, and even one piece of plywood across, but this not the entire gazebo, plot filled with plywood, that would be an awful lot of money. And I, I wasn't clear what exactly you meant by plywood it in. I, it, it wasn't clear. You, you demonstrated a uh, hazard in your petition yes. that consisted of the rails being knocked out along the side and the potential for kids and people getting hurt in there. Mm -hmm. So plastic tape can just be taken down any way they want. Yep. So what do you want? Well, you had mentioned plywood, plywood in it in. So to me, I, I wasn't sure if you meant, I'm trying to be clear. I don't know if you meant just across the entryway, which is all that really needs to be blocked off is the steps going up into the gazebo, unless somebody, somebody's like a, you know, athlete or whatever. And, or if you were talking about putting plywood all the way around the gazebo to block any possible access. I wasn't sure what exactly you meant by that. And I just wanted clarity. 
It's, I believe something like that would be up to the people managing the property, whoever is in charge of maintaining it. They'd make that call because they know about the liabilities and measurements and all of the things that we are just speculating about. Mm -hmm. But as I said, one you know one for, one piece of plywood would, would be understandable and would work. I don't think it's up to us at this, at this point. The yeah. petition has been signed and the hazard's been deemed by 5% of the population, so it has to be shut down. So it's up to whoever maintains the, that uh, property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.